Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Bayer Crop Science and CNMC. This is Real Agriculture and I am Amber Bell. For today's episode of Wheat School, I had the chance to catch up with Troy Basaraba of Bayer. We were discussing T3 fungicide application right down to sprayer setup and speed traveled in the field. So this really boils down to how to get the most return out of your fungicide application. So listen into the conversation. When it comes down to the application side of things, let's dive deeper into that one as well. What are some things that growers should be considering as they're looking at applying their fungicide? Okay, the application thing, it's, it's, it's the fun part of the job because that's where, that's where you're in the sprayer, you're behind the wheel, you're ripping across the field. Um, this is the fun part, but it's, it's also the part where things can come off the rails pretty quickly at the same time as well too. So we talk about uh, droplet size, water volume, application speed, um, you know, boom heights. Those are kind of the, the big four on that. So with, um, with fungicides, we know that fungicides work better when you have awesome coverage. Mm -hmm. So the more water you can throw at the crop, uh, the, the more it's going gonna, it's gonna to coat leaves better. It's going to have more opportunity to coat the heads. It's just going to give their fungicide a lot more of a chance to, to get where it needs to be to provide that protection for the plant, right? So it's, you know, for, for something like going on wheat heads, you know, we, I say minimum 10, absolute minimum of 10. Um, but if you can go 15, great. If you can go 20, even better. But, you know, there's, <laughs> water truck driver is going to be just, just humping it at that point in time. So that's one thing. Um, the other thing is, and I've seen this, is looking at droplet size um, of, your, of your spray pattern. So I've heard it before where guys say, it's like, yeah, I'm ripping across the field. I just got a fog coming out the back. It's, it's doing awesome for coverage. And while they may think that, is when you start to get into some of those sprays where you have like, um, like a fine or even, even a slightly medium uh, coarse or a slightly medium droplet, when it comes out the back of the sprayer, it's gonna be very susceptible to wind. Mm. So it's not like you're directing it into the crop and where it needs to be, that's more so the wind gonna determine where it lands and stuff like that. So from a droplet size, I really like to recommend that guys get into kind of like that coarse um, like a you know a heavy heavy medium to a coarse droplet size because at that point in time the sprayer is actually able to direct it better right. and less susceptible to drift or off target movement and um, and stuff. Okay. Um, the other thing is going after the wheat heads is is extra challenging. So when you, when you look at this wheat plant right here, you know so if you think of in crop nozzles, they'll point straight down. So when you, when you come across a weed head like this, yes, very easy to hit the flag leaf as you're coming across this way. But if your spray pattern's coming across like this, it'll hit this side of the head decently, but then you gotta rely on aerodynamics to try and wrap around uh, to, to the, the other side, side of the head. head. And I've seen this before, and I've, d I've done this in, in some demos where, yeah, I can coat that side really good, and you can see it using water sensitive paper, but then there's nothing on the back side. Hmm. So you've protected half the head. So what we generally like to do or recommend is that growers go with a forward and backward orientation on their nozzle. So you're coming at it with a forward pattern like this. So you coat that side of the head. And then as you go past, then you have another nozzle that points backwards that shoots to the back side of the head. And we've seen with that one, and there's various different nozzle configurations that will do that. But then you're kind of getting a lot more panoramic all the way around and coating like that whole head and, and setting up that barrier kind of all the way through. But the other thing that's in, that kind of ties into that is boom height. And with, when you have like a forward or backward um, nozzle configuration like that, we tell guys that we want to keep them nice and tight to the canopy. So, you know, keep your boom height kind of in that 15 to 20 inches off, because then when, it, when the droplet shoots out of the nozzle, you want it to hit that head quick, right? Mm -hmm. But if your boom is way up high off that wheat head like this, your droplet will come out, it'll start to slow down from wind shear, gravity will take over, and then it will fall vertically and miss that weed head. So that's why we tell guys, and kind of this ties in with speed, is make sure we're traveling a speed where we can keep that boom nice and low, nice and tight, and allow that opportunity where you can hit that head really good. So everyone asks me, it's like, well, how fast can I go? And it's just like, well, that'll depend on your sprayer and your 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 nozzle and your orifice size and your water quality and all that other sort of stuff but 
just anything that we can do to get that right there. I know it's July and everyone wants to get the spraying done. They've been in the sprayer lots over the course of the year and they wanna get spraying done so they can get to the lake. And we tend to see guys go like this a little bit, but if we slow down a little bit and make sure that we're doing a good job of hitting that head, then you're really getting your bang for your buck out of your fungicide. Right, and I guess that too comes down to economics. I mean, if we're spending the money on fungicide and we're spending the money on being out in the sprayer, we better get it right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and you kind of go, it's like, I, you know, when you start thinking about time it takes to, to spray and stuff like that, and I'm not, not trying to minimize that in any way, but if it takes you an extra half hour to do a field and you're going to do a, a phenomenal, like a, a way better job versus hitting the stick or the booms start flying up and stuff like that, that's a, that's a, that's a very well spent half hour in my head. Mm -hmm, so. Mm -hmm. Terrific. And any words of encouragement for growers as we get into spraying some fungicide in this T3 timing? You know what? It's, uh, we've, here in Manitoba, like we've really seen the crops jump here over the last couple of bit. And things are looking good. Like if you look back here, you know, the, the wheat's looking good. Um, and I kind of go uh, from where my head's at is just like if you have a good looking crop, why not make sure you give it the best probable potential um, out of that? And part of that is, it's, 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 it's a whole integrated strategy in terms of like your crop health and, and fertility and, and keeping weeds at bay. And then you also protect it from the fungicide, you know, giving your crop the best chance to provide the maximum amount of, of yield and quality that you can. And we're setting up good for it here right now. So. That's great. Well, thank you very much, Troy. And that was Troy Basaraba on Real Agriculture.